In this video you'll learn how to create views, create and modify columns, beams, and slabs, as well as copy and mirror objects. Here you see the outcome of what we'll model in this video. In this video we will continue building the structure we started in the previous video. Before we begin, make sure to have the model used in the previous video open. Let's start by creating steel columns. Scroll the ribbon to show the steel commands. Select column and pick the position for the column in the midpoint of the pad footing as the architect's drawing indicates. Create the second column in the same way. Notice how the columns are rotated incorrectly. They're also too high. Select the first column, then hold down the control key and select the second. Use the contextual toolbar to change the height of the columns to 3600 millimeters. You can also rotate both columns at one go using the contextual toolbar. We no longer need the architect's drawings, so go to the Reference Model side pan. You can see the visibility symbol here. Click the symbol to hide the reference model in the model view. Close the reference models pane. Next add concrete columns. Double click the column command to open the properties dialog box. You can see various properties such as name, profile, and material. To change the profile, either type it in the text box or click Select. When you click Select, the Profile Catalog opens. The Profile Catalog shows all the available profiles. Let's select Circular Sections Type D. You can see how the profile looks in the picture. You can change the diameter here by typing 350 as the diameter. Click OK. As you can see in the Properties dialog box, the profile has changed. Next, go to the Position tab and set the top level to 3600 millimeters. Click OK and start creating the columns. Change the Snap settings again to pick the pad footing midpoint more easily. You can also use the copy command to copy the columns. First, select a column and press Ctrl C. Pick the origin and then the destination to copy the column. This is how you can easily copy the column to the correct position. While working in Tecla structures, you can have multiple views open. Let's test this by creating a new view. Select the grid, right click, and then select Create View Along Grid Lines. Click Create. Here's a list of views. Let's work on the floor level, which is the plane level at 3600 millimeters. Select the view on the list and click the arrow. The view is now visible and you can close the views dialog box. Now we will arrange the view so that they fit nicely side by side. The window command is always visible on the right hand side of the ribbon. Click window and then tile vertically. Now it's easy to work in both views. Let's use the new view to add concrete beams. On the ribbon, double-click the Beam command to open Beam Properties. First, change the profile to suit the model. Type 600 times 300 and click OK. Let's add beams now. First, pick the first point and then the second point to create a beam. You can also start by picking the first point in the 3D view Go over to the plain view and pick the second point there.
The advantage of working in a plane view is that the commands always snap on the plane height. For example, picking the second point on the intersection of the plane 3600 creates the beam on this level. You can always click undo to cancel the last command you used. Let's continue placing beams. Snap to extension line to make the beam parallel to the previously created beam. Create intermediate beams like this. When you have finished adding beams, press the Escape key to exit the command or right click and select Interrupt. Next, adjust the elevator shaft wall to better fit the design and the beams. Start by activating Direct Modification. Direct Modification allows you to modify models' objects by simply dragging their handles such as corner points and edge lines. Select the wall and drag the edge to adjust the wall width. Let's create a slab. On the Concrete tab, select the Slab command. Working with slabs in Tecla structures is easy. All you need to do is pick the corner points for the slabs. It is easiest to use the new plane view you created. If you make a mistake when picking the corner points, you can always undo the last click by pressing the backspace key. Finish creating the slab by either picking a closed area or by clicking the middle mouse button. We recommend that you always create parts by snapping to grid lines and grid intersections. This way you can easily modify the position of the parts by modifying the grid, for example if there's any changes made by the architect. To do this, double click the grid to open the grid properties. Select Magnetic Grid Plane and click Modify. Next, drag Grid Line 2 to the new position. We see that every part which was modeled to grid line 2 moves accordingly. It's easy to adjust the slab by picking it and grabbing the handle and then dragging it to the correct position. To undo the changes you made, just press Ctrl Z. As this is a symmetrical building, you can easily mirror the structure you just created. Select the parts that you want to mirror, then right click, select Copy Special, and Mirror. See the instructions in the status bar. Let's pick two points to define the mirror line and click Copy.
Finally, let's add a slab between these two structures. Click the slab command and pick the corner points for the slab. Press the middle mouse button to finish to create the slab. Now we have modeled the first floor of our building.